your introduction to Coach Vic Schaefer, was there some culture shock? And what's your uh, uh, best uh, story about uh, Vic Schaefer in the early going? Uh, we kind of just, you know, we met them all the same, you know, through Zoom with COVID and stuff. It's kind of hard to really meet in person. But when we did get to meet Coach, uh, it was a really good thing. I was excited to be able to get on the court with him and his staff. Um, getting adjusted hasn't been hard. Uh, we're getting used to his practices and the way that he coaches in his style of play. And I feel like we'll be ready for whatever comes our way. And what jumps out at you about him? What characteristic or quality he has? Uh, I would just always say he's a beat, a uh, really high intense guy, uh, even in practice or just in general, he's always, uh, you know, uplifted and a really just a great guy to be around. And are his practices pretty grueling? Yeah, definitely. Definitely intense more than what I'm used to. <laughs> Thanks. Senator Golden, go ahead, please, sir. Uh, hey, Charlie. Um, Coach Schaefer was, uh, we, we asked him about uh, you guys not being ranked in, in the major polls, and uh, he expressed some surprise because he's got, he's in his words, he's got all American talent and Charlie Carrier and Celeste Taylor. Are you guys taking that as fuel to, to show people that you guys should have been ranked in the preseason? Yeah, I would definitely say it's fuel and motivation. I really do feel like uh, the team that we have, the quality of players that we have, we should have been ranked. But at the end of the day, all we could do is just take that as motivation and take that into this upcoming game tomorrow. And how, and how um, you said those practices have been grueling. How much are you guys pressing? Because uh, you didn't press a whole lot under Karen, and uh, that's his staple. He says yeah. he's going to press you from the city limits until you get to the, to the gym. Yeah, and he wasn't lying. So <laughs> <laughs> we have definitely have been doing that, and I, I can, you know, bet you that you'll see that in the next game as well. We've been working uh, really hard, both ends, defensive especially. especially. Chip Brown, go ahead, please. Charlie, what um, what stands out about that first meeting with with Coach when uh, when he addressed the team? What did he um, say? Just the amount of confidence he's had in us since the beginning. You know, not knowing us, uh, just knowing like um, his expectations were really high in the beginning, and you know, as a team, as his players, we're expected to fulfill all those expectations and. Um, it's just what comes with being a player here at the University of Texas. Uh, you're expected to be the best, do the best in all that you do, and he expects that from us. And I feel like we, we hold each other accountable and we try to do that every day. And can you talk about the, the new folks coming in, um, especially your point guard and what, you know, what the chemistry has been like? Yeah, I feel like our freshmen coming in have been really well. Uh, I would say a freshman that stands out is uh, Ashley. Uh, she's definitely filled a role uh, as a freshman. It's hard coming in, but she she's expected to do a lot because she is a point guard and she has to lead this team. So I feel like she's carried that really well and she's doing really well right now. Mark Rosner, go ahead, please. Yes, hi. Um, how difficult is it? I know peak players always say they like that full court style until they maybe have to see how tough it is. Is it a lot more difficult than what you're used to? Uh, for me, it's different because I am a, I'm a post player, but I feel like everybody has to be involved. And, you know, that's what coach stresses uh, to us, that everybody has to be involved, you know, in the press. So um, I'm getting used to it. Um, it's not nothing hard because we've been working on it. And so uh, it's getting better for us. How is uh, Lambert doing? Uh, she's doing well. She's doing really well. She's doing well, leading this team, doing her job. So she is on the court then, yeah, she, she's, she's doing well, yeah. Thank you. Roger Wallace, go ahead, please. Hey, Charlie, how anxious are you guys just to play considering your season, postseason got cut short, coaching change, all the uncertainty, just get on the floor and play a game tomorrow has got to be uh, uh, pretty highly anticipated. Oh, yeah, it's I've been waiting to play a game for a while. Uh, it's been since, like, April. So I, I'm ready. I'm excited. Uh, I can't really – can't really say it, anything, just can't wait to get out and work and play, you know, show everybody what we've been working on and it's been a long time coming. And so tomorrow will be the day. Kirk Bowles, go ahead. Are you worried about your depth in the front court? Or are you got to play every minute. 
yeah, definitely going to have to play 40 minutes. But, I mean, it's something that we've been conditioned for. Uh, trust me, we've been running, we've been conditioned. And, uh, I mean, it's possible. You can play a game with six or seven. I mean, Notre Dame's done it. And so it's something that we can do and that we're expected to do. And so we'll be ready. Does he like to play a lot of people? Does he like a big rotation if he has it? If he has it, yeah. But right now, you know, we're, we don't have a lot of depth right now. So we just have to use what we have. And I feel like we're doing well with what we got. And finally, uh, does he have any catchphrases that he repeats all the time so you hear it in your sleep when you're, when you're dreaming? It's a lot. Um, I just hear for me. For me, it's just 40 minutes. He'll just say 40 minutes, and I know what that means. <laughs> but he has a lot of phrases that he says. Anything else? Um, he'll say something like, I want a plain hot dog. I don't want mustard. I don't want ketchup. Meaning, don't make it too special. Just, you know, do it as is. Right. <laughs> Have two more in the queue, Chip and Roz. Uh, Chip, go ahead, uh, please, first one question each. Charlie, were you uh, recruited by Vic when he was at Mississippi State? Uh, I don't believe I was re recruited by him. I remember being, um, have sent letters from Mississippi State, but I wasn't really considering Mississippi State or they were looking at me, no. Okay, can I ask you real quick, like what he said about the, you know, the expectations, like what he's said specifically for you and for this team? Uh, specifically, um, of course, he expects me to be a leader for this team. Not only that, expects me to play all 40 minutes of the game, contributing well uh, defensively, offensively. Um, he expects me to fill a role and be a leader for this team as I am a upperclassman and, you know, lead by example. Mark Rosner, one last one for Charlie, please. Sure. Uh, while they're waiting for to find out about Ebo, the only two play, post players other than you are freshmen. How ready are they to go? Uh, the freshmen, they're developing, you know, as a freshman, it's it's hard to get adjusted. But I feel like what has, you know, what we're given right now with 2020, uh, I feel like we've been given a lot of time over the summer to work on it. And so I feel like they'll be ready. They're going to have to be ready. You know, they're going to have to be. Celeste, uh, how much has your job changed with the new coach and the new system? And is it harder playing that type of uh, you know, full court basketball? Uh, my, my role has changed tremendously, especially getting older. I definitely need to be a more vocal leader. I definitely need to um, just play play hard um, and just show every all the freshmen and all the my other teammates that you know we can get through this together. And is it it's not as hard. It's, I don't think it's hard. I just think that um, it's just a different perspective, something new. So just something that I need to get used to, but. I, I told him since the beginning that whatever he needs me to do, I'm, I'm here to do for him. Thank you. Carter Yates, go ahead, please. Hi, Celeste. Carter Yates with the Daily Texan. You had a really great freshman season uh, where you made a really big impact, but in your sophomore year, what are some specific areas you're looking to develop your game in? Definitely just continuing to be the number one defender and defend the other team's best player at all times and contributing more offensively, um, rebounding, assists. Um, I'm still going to be diving on the floor, jumping over the scoreboard, all those other stuff. But um, you know, just being more of a vocal leader as well and communicating with my teammates. Senator Golden, go ahead, please. No, Celeste, in uh, basketball, the, the earth style of play is sometimes referred to as a junkyard dog, and that's that's a compliment. Um, give, given Vic's um, penchant for full court press for the full game, doesn't that kind of buy into your way of doing business? And is that going to excite you to open up some more opportunities to get some easy buckets? Yeah, I was, I was super excited to hear that Coach Schaefer and his staff were coming, um, bringing along his style of play of getting up and down the floor, um, pushing tempo, picking up full court. You know, I, I was so excited. And, you know, that's how I love to play, get on the floor, get up, die for those loose balls, um, and pressuring the ball 24-7. So you guys are definitely going to see a lot of that from not just me, but all of my teammates, because that's just the way and the style of play that we currently are playing at. 
what is what has he said to you guys about not being ranked? Uh, he told us a couple of weeks ago that uh, I've got two All-Americans on my team, Celeste Taylor and Charlie Collier, and, and we should probably be ranked. Oh, uh, how good did that feel to hear that from him? And and how much fuel has that given you guys going into the season? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're the underdog, you know, I think it, it just fuels you so much. You just are ready to go out there and just show everyone, you know, what they're missing and what they're not thinking about and who they're not thinking about. So I know for all of us, not just me, there's going to be a lot of other names that people are going to have to bring up and are going to talk about. So I'm just super excited to get out there and play and show everybody what, what we've been working for. Chip Brown, go ahead, please. Celeste, what, um, what, was, what was the first impression that you had with, with Vic? What, you know, stood out to you immediately? Um, and then, you know, how's his culture different? Yeah, so immediately what stood out to me was his passion for the game. I mean, he loves, he loves the game and he pays attention to all the small things and the details. And I think that that's very, very important in the game of basketball. So just his passion for the game, I think it set out to all of us. He's just hungry and he wants to win. And you want coaches like that that want to win and will do anything to help you win. And, I mean, for me, it's just it's just a really great feeling um, to, to have coaches like that and, you know, just being able to get together with my teammates and finally come together to actually, you know, win together and, you know, under – a coaching staff that enjoys winning and enjoys the business-like area. Chip, anything else? Are you good? Um, well, what uh, what about the assistants on that staff and and how they have you know what kind of impression they've made? Yeah, them as well. I mean, he has a very very good chemistry with his whole coaching staff, and I think that's also important for us as a team to see um, because that forms chemistry between us as well. So when we see something in the coaching staff, you know, we want to imitate that. So I think that's very important that they're all together. They're always on the same page. They're always communicating with each other. So that's just a good representation of how they want their culture and their style to be. Chris Gardner, thanks for hopping on. Uh, <clears throat> go ahead, please. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Celeste, how has or how did COVID impact your workouts this summer and did it have any impact on you or your family or friends? Yeah, so I mean, I'm from New York, born and raised, so um, it was kind of tough out there in the beginning. Um, thankfully and God willing that nothing happened. None of my family members had um, gotten COVID, but it was definitely tough. It was hard at first, just being having to stay home and stay quarantined and not being able to leave the house. Um, unless we had to go grocery shopping or something like that. Um, but my workouts, I was able to get into a small gym um, with my trainer and it was just us two in there. So that was really good that I was able to um, still keep my stamina up a little bit and as high as I hoped it to be, but just being able to work out and just touch, touch a basketball and, you know, just shoot a basketball. So I think that was really important for me during quarantine. And Personally, you know, it helped me out tremendously because I definitely thought a lot about it and a lot about myself and I drew closer with my family, had a lot more family time and got closer to God. So, you know, it was, it was a great time for me to be in quarantine. Thank you very much. Kirk Bowles, go ahead, please. Yes, yeah, Celeste, uh, did uh, Coach Schaefer watch tape of all y'all's games last year and he, did he have any critical evaluation of y'all? Um, I'm, I'm sure he, he watched um, all of us that are rejoining the team and, you know, how we played last year to see if he could do anything different. Um, he's going to come in with a new style of play. So I guess he just, you know, wants to break our habits that we've had in other systems um, so that we could come in here and, and do really well in his system. Critiques, you know, he just told me because I was a freshman last year, so he knew it was kind of hard. So he's just like, you know, you, you're supposed to get better your best time to develop is in between your freshman and your sophomore year. So he just told me, you know, just keep working hard and, you know, just, you know, learn from this new system and, you know, just get better every day. So that's what I've been doing. How would you describe his practices? 
our practices are very long. We have um, a lot. Most of the time we are always on defense. Um, we have a lot of plays to get through. We're very fast paced. Everything is on the move. Uh, we're, we're here. We're on this side. We're on that side. We're on the floor. He's just very, very intense. Um, and he tries to distribute all his knowledge to all of us, which I really enjoy. Um, and it's been fun. And the last thing, is there one player who's kind of come the furthest since last season that's improved the most that you've noticed? I think you're definitely going to see, um, obviously, our new our new freshman, but I think Joanne Allen Taylor, you're going to see a lot more from her as well. Um, you're, a lot of people are going to be talking about her because she's going to do really well this season. Thank you. Mark Rosner, you have the last ones with Celeste. Okay, Celeste, uh, how much emphasis has uh, Vic put on reducing turnovers after the problems you've had in the past? Has he mentioned those or just sort of moved forward? Yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely mentioned a lot of that. Um, we we got to take care of the ball. That's the end of this discussion. We can't turn over the ball. We can't throw it away. We can't waste valuable possessions. So you know, he's definitely emphasized taking care of the ball. Um, we've struggled a little bit with that, but I think that that's just a learning process and um, a part of the, the system, the new system that we're running. So I'm really excited, though, because we learn every day and, you know, we learn from our mistakes. So we just got to keep getting better at it. And he's going to keep emphasizing it so he can't know more until we don't turn the ball over. But um, he does emphasize it a lot. Thank you. Can you describe your excitement and anticipation level, Vic? Not really. It's, uh, you know, I'm really, uh, you know, when you go through the notes and you read you're the fifth coach in the history of Texas women's basketball, it's a, it's a pretty humbling and honorable statement. And uh, it, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just really hard to believe it's here just because there's nothing normal about what what I've done since being named here. I mean, I, I can't – I just was over in my office, and I'm not really supposed to be over there. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we have, we've got a makeshift office here in Cooley um, down in, in, uh, in a coach's lounge, and that's where myself and Blair work every day, and my other coaches are in locker rooms and team rooms and places like that. So – it's just there's nothing no, there's just nothing normal about what we do every day, and so to realize, hey, we're fixing to play a game tomorrow, uh, it, it is really uh, you know it just it it really hadn't it doesn't hadn't hit yet that I guess for me, but it's uh, I know it's here. And what's the one quality you think you've seen in your team that you know your team will be able to fill in the blank? Well, I think number one, they they just they've done what we've asked them to do. They've worked really hard in practice. Um, they're not perfect. Um, you know, we're going to have a lot of growing pain, y'all. We we basically have two starters back, and our next most experienced player is Joanne, who averaged 17 minutes a game. And after that, it's Audrey, and she played in about half of the games. So we're a very young, inexperienced, immature basketball team. And that is, you know, opening against an SMU team that I have tremendous respect for, for, for their staff. Um, obviously, um, they're coming home. Uh, four, four starters returning. Um, you know, a, a team that lost seven games by a total of 22 points a year ago. So it's, you know, really, you know, we with this team that I have opening against a veteran team like that is it's going to be quite challenging for us, I can tell you. And, uh, and watching their, their film from a year ago toward the end of the year, Travis had them playing really well. And um, so – you know, I do. I am proud of how we've competed every day in practice for the most part. Chip Brown, go ahead, please. Vic, what's uh, take us through the maybe the, the culture shock of them getting used to your system and any funny anecdotes 
uh, along those lines? You know, I, I just think for us and when you play for us, my staff and I, and in our system, it's just learning to understand how hard, you know, we, we expect you to play. Um, we're, you know, we don't apologize for being demanding. Uh, I think that's a quality that we've always taken great pride in. It, it, when people talk about, you know, my basketball teams, they talk about how hard our kids play. And for young kids, typically it's your incoming freshmen. For me, it's my entire team because they've never been around me or my staff. Just understanding there's a whole nother level you can go to, you just ain't never been there. And I've got to be the guy to try to help you figure that out. And we got to, by the way, do it really quick. And, um, and I think that's, that's a big challenge. And, uh, you know, I know our practices are, are um, you know, they're probably longer than they're used to going and more demanding and, and uh, you know, probably physical. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's what we really believe in and what's allowed us, I think, to be as successful as we've been. So, uh, you know, it, that's a that's a challenge for, for our young kids and it's a challenge for our staff. And again, you know, what we put on the floor tomorrow night, they're going to be way different a month from now and then they'll be way different two months from then. You know, and so it's, it's just going to be a process. So do you have the... Do you have the kind of athletes you need or are you having to, you know, do with what you've got? Yeah, I think depth is an issue for us, for sure, Chip. Um, you know, we've, we've got some depth issues and, and we've, we've, addressed, uh, we've addressed some of that in recruiting. And, and so, um, but we certainly, you know, I, I do think we have some, some depth issues. Keep in mind, we have, you know, there was a, a five-player freshman recruiting class that had been signed, and four of them uh, make up our ten players currently, uh, or nine players, nine players currently that are going to be eligible to play tomorrow night. And how's how's Lambert doing? You know, she's uh, she's progressing. She won't play. You know, she won't play tomorrow night, uh, but she's progressing really well. And, um, you know, she's uh, – Heidi's doing a great job with her, our trainer. And, and so I expect her – you know, I expect her back maybe in, in a week or so. Senator Golden, go ahead, please, sir. Vic, how long did it take you to get that, that total buy-in in Stark Vegas? Uh, how long a process was that? Well, it, it, it took a while. And, and again, um, that first group that we inherited, um, man, great kids. I mean, great kids, Cedric, but just really struggled talent-wise playing in that league um, that, that first year or two. I mean, we were 13 and 15, then we went 22 and 14. But each of those first two years, we won five games in the SEC. Cedric, I didn't think we'd win five games the whole year that first year. And, um, and so, you know, um, you, you, I was thinking, it's funny you asked that because I was driving in today thinking, okay, um, you know, going through year one and, and, and everything that that entailed and how demanding and how we coach those kids the same way that we coached that 2011 team that won the national championship. And you go, well, how can you do that? Those kids can't. They're not as talented. That team's not, but they deserve that from us as coaches. Um, and you know that team, as as um, as much as we struggled, especially early. By February, we end up beating number eleven Georgia, held them to five baskets in the second half, beat them fifty to forty four. I mean, we got no business beating number eleven Georgia with that team. I mean, Georgia was loaded as always. And I mean, but that team really bought into, okay, there's going to be nights when we can't score, you know, if we, we can't throw it in the ocean if we're standing on the beach at high tide, but we can guard, 
You know, defense travels. And so we really – those kids really bought into the defensive piece of it was really the only way we were going to have a chance to win. And, and because we were so limited skill set wise with players that could score. I mean, really. And, and so, I mean, we could be, you know, we'd be headed into halftime and leave three on the floor and they'd score five minutes into halftime. And, and so it's just a struggle. And so this team, you know, defensively, we're still, we're, 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 we're a long way. And again, a lot of it has to do with, how hard you have to play on that end, how smart, technique. Um, and, and so, and it's a different way for them. And, and so I think we've had 26 practices, maybe 27, you know. And so um, this is where we are, but we're, we've are we got to play. So we we got to get ready and we've got to get ready for what I think is a really good team, a veteran team. And, um, you know, we're not that. We're not a veteran team. I like my team. I think we got a chance to be really good. But we're, we're certainly a long way from being a veteran team. I mean, even Charlie Collier at 13 points and 10 rebounds a game, coming back as your, you know, as, as our leading scorer, that's after one year. You know, she didn't play a lot her freshman year. And, and so uh, I'm excited that, you know, what y'all are going to see is I'm excited game to game to see our improvement, to see – um, you know, how we're going to play the next game and the next game and the next game. And I thought we were much better in our exhibition game against our men's practice team last week than we were the week before in our scrimmage with them. So we'll see. How um, concerned are you with the depth? And also your two, your two returning best players, Charlie and Celeste, are, are very handsy. Uh, they, they got into foul trouble a lot last year because uh, very athletic players. How, how do you walk that fine line between aggressiveness and careless fouls? Yeah, you know, we've, we've, really, um, we've really stressed that with them, uh, with all of our players, the technique piece. I'm a big technique guy. I'm, I'm, I'm big on footwork. Uh, I'm, I'm, and so that's something they go through with me every day. And, um, you know, you want to, you want to, uh, Chip asked me any, any sayings that, you know, or any, any funny things. Well, one of the things we say every day in our, one of our defensive drill is ride the bull. And it, what that means is, is you're showing those referees technique in riding the bull. When you think about it, what's a guy look like that rides a bull? He's got his hand down there holding on to that rope and he's got this other hand up. And what we're doing is we're showing those referees technique with this hand up and this collapsed arm down here. You can't have an arm bar out, but you can have a collapsed arm in. And so we talk, we say it every day, ride the bull. It's a, it's a three minute drill. We start practice defensive segment of practice with it every day. And, and so um, again, our depth is an issue said so it's, it's going to be a, you know, I, because of how we want to play too. We're not just standing around in a two, three zone playing, hope you miss defense, you know? Uh, if you do that, you probably don't have a lot of depth issues, but that isn't how we're going to play, as you know. We have three more in the queue. Riley from Horns Illustrated, go ahead, please. Hi coach, um, just interested to know what kinds of developments you've seen from your team from the first day of practice until now. I'm, so, I'm sorry, what, what elements, what kind of... Uh, what developments have you seen oh. from your team just from the first day of practice till now? Yeah, so again, uh, I think our... our um, I, think, I think, number one, I think Charlie Collier is a workaholic. I think she works her rear end off every day. She has tremendous work ethic, and uh, I've seen her get a lot better. Um and, and then I, I, I've seen some development, you know, with, with Celeste and, and uh, uh, Joanne, um, two kids that, that uh, you know, Celeste was on an all-freshman team. But here's what y'all have to keep, consider now. Celeste and, and, and Charlie were really good with four seniors. It's easy to be really good with four seniors. 
real easy. You know, three of them starters, and and but all four veterans. It's a whole lot easier to be good in that environment than it is to now all of a sudden you're going to be the focal point of everybody's defense. And so, um, you know, that's the that's the growth that we're going to have to have this year in a really short period of time. Is is um, you know. Those kids are going to get, you know, Celeste's going to get everybody's perimeter defender. Charlie's going to get everybody's not only their best inside defender, she's going to get their best scouting report. Whether they double her, whether they – whatever they're going to do, she's going to get that. And so, you know, we've got other players now that are going to have to step up. Audrey played 18 games a year ago out of 30. You know, uh, tough, hard-nosed, physical kid. I love her. You know, she fits – uh, she she would she would be what we call she fits you know our style of play and and how she plays the game but played 18 games a year ago averaged 10 minutes in those 18 games so uh, I know she had some injury issues but I mean that's our next most experienced player so um, you know Ashley uh, is going to have to play some at point for us as a freshman and and play some real meaningful minutes for us. Um, she's had some 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 good practices uh, earlier in the in in the season, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to uh, bring those you know bring those kids along as fast as we can because there's nobody else. Exactly, and you spoke of that depth. Um, you know who are, it, it, you don't have a lot of depth, but who are you expecting maybe to make some contributions off the bench? Well, I think Deanna Gaston certainly has a chance to be really good for us. Um, again, that kid was the number one player in the country her freshman year in high school before having some some injuries. And so she's skilled, big body guard skills, uh, can stretch you and do some really special things. So Deanna's going to have to continue to, to work and get better. She had the you know, she had a little injury early that hampered her being in our first probably two, two to three weeks of practices, uh, two weeks for sure, full practices. The third week she was limited. So, um, you know, that's going to be, to me, that's going to be a big, big piece to our puzzle is what, what, how can we develop her as quick as we can and get her to function at a really high level? Because again, her problem is not skill set. Her issues are playing hard and understanding, okay, you made, making one play out of five, it, it, that ain't it. You know, you, you, you got a, every possession, both ends of the floor. We don't have offense, and then somebody comes in and plays defense. You got to play both ends. And so, um, you know, I think for her, it's just understanding and, and playing in a, you know, again, in a system that's demanding of both ends. And you can't take plays off. People are going to, they're going to, they're going to pick you out. The film doesn't lie. As I've said many times, people will pick you out of film and they'll, they'll understand how to attack you and how you're wanting to attack them. So it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, for her, I think she's a big, big piece because she can give us depth at two positions, four and five. And, um, you know, uh, I think that's, that's critical. Audrey can play four and five for us. Um, Again, Ashley is going to have to give us some meaningful minutes at point guard. Um, Shay has shown um, Shay has shown at times to be able to shoot the ball, uh, but consistently no. And but now that's a kid that plays extremely hard. She's going to make mistakes, but she's going to make mistakes going 100 miles an hour. So, Carter Yates, go ahead, please, sir. Hey, Coach. Celeste was just in the Zoom call talking about the leaps and bounds in strides that Joanne Allen Taylor has made, and you just talked about her development too. She only played about 17 minutes per game last year, but what about her game makes you feel like she can step in and be a real good contributor for y'all this season? No, I, I love her, her, her skill set, Carter. I mean, she reminds me a lot of a, a kid that I had for three years in Jordan Danbury. Uh, she can get to her spot. Um, you know, just about any time she wants to. Joanne, Joanne's uh, issues, the blade have been 
you know, play two guard here. I recruited her as a point guard, um, and now I'm playing her at point. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, she's having to kind of re um, program her mind uh, in that role as a point guard. But, uh, you know, she can be a scoring point guard for us, I think, and uh, give us some minutes there. And so, uh, you know, depending on lineups, depending on matchups, playing her at point, what we do with Deanna, whether we bring her off the bench or we start her at the four, um, you know, or five and play Charlie at four. I mean, we've got some 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 situations where matchups could be in a real a positive force, but it if you're going to play Deanna and Charlie together, you're, you're basically starting your backup, you know, what would be our backup five if Charlie gets in foul trouble. And so now you're putting her in a position to, to, um, to be limited. So I got to be real careful there, but um, that's the thing with, with Joanne right now. And she's trying, man, I love that kid. I love how hard she plays and, um, you know, she's, she's trying to please, and that's, that's all you can ask of the kid. We have time for two last questions, one each. Mark Rosner first. Yeah, uh, Vic, you, you talk about, uh, you know, depth issues and maybe players that didn't come in to play this type of ball. Do you have to make concessions to that, or do you just say, this is what we're going to be doing moving forward, and we're just going to have to live with it and whatever happens. Well, I certainly think there's a, I think there's a, a style of play and a, a level of expectation when it comes to playing hard that no matter what your philosophy is that you, you have to demand and, and you expect. And um, I, I think it, the thing you have, that I'm having to teach these kids is that not only are they having to learn a, a new a new system and a new expect level of expectation and style of play, and you're being thrown into the the fire, so to speak, because four you know four out of six veterans left. But I'm also having to tell them and prepare them for the fact that when you got Texas across your chest, everybody's coming, and they're bringing everybody with them to beat you. And you're going to get everybody's best game. And so that's a piece to the puzzle that, again, I fully understand. But I'm not sure they do. And, you know, you recruit kids from all over the country. You know, I don't know about you, but I, I grew up pretty close to this university. I have a real understanding of the University of Texas and all that that entails. And trying to impart that on your student athletes sometimes is a challenge. And, uh, you know, you don't want them to learn through defeat. Chip Brown, last one, please. Vic, who's your, who's your best on ball defender right now? And yeah, I think, I think it's, you know, it's probably, um, you know, I, well, <laughs> it, it may be to be determined, uh, but I, I would have to say, you know, Joanne and Celeste play really hard on the ball, but now Audrey is is smart. She reminds me a, a lot of, of, of Blair in that she's always a step ahead in her mind, what people are trying to do and how they're trying to do things to us. She's tough. She'll step in front of a freight train and, st and take a charge. So, um you know, I, I think those three, the thing about Ashley that I really like, she talks, she communicates, especially in transition. For a freshman, she really does a nice job of communicating. So, um, you know, I think each of them, you know, depending on what the matchup is, but if we got a monster we got to go defend that's getting 18, 20 a night, I'm probably going to rely on, you know, those two, you know, those two more experienced. I don't know how much more experienced they can be, but you know, Celeste is a sophomore and 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 Joanne being a junior. And we'll probably start there. And then if we have to go to option three, it would just depend on 
you know, probably quickness and size, physicality and those kinds of things. So, but, um, you know, we're, we're, like I said, we're a work in progress there. I think we've got some kids that, that um, can certainly do the job for us. Thanks. Coach Schaefer, thank you. I appreciate everybody being on today. Uh, wishing our guys the best on Friday. Wishing our men's team the best tomorrow night. Happy Thanksgiving. Praise the Lord and hook them horns.